Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back once again, or for the very first time, to the Farts and Crap Show, where today, as per usual, it's your host, Anjo, here with another video for you guys that's, um, just a little bit of a departure, not part of a, a usual series or anything, but, um, more of a special occasion kind of a video. But, um, yeah, as we are eagerly approaching the appro the release of uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree for Elden Ring, um, there's another game from uh, FromSoft that just turned 10 years old, like 10th anniversary just like a couple months ago and that's a uh, Dark Souls 2 now I was gonna make this video next year because I've played this game a lot and every time I've sat here on the title screen one of the things I've noticed is it says 2015 now that is for this version of the game Scholar of the First Sun but initially, it was released in March of 2014 in Japan. And uh, oddly enough, if you guys, you know, are one of the uh, non-Japanese players of Dark Souls 2, you may not realize or have known that uh, Dark Souls 2 was actually self-published in Japan. Like... Bandai Namco did the publishing for the international release, but for the original Japanese release, From Software also published the game, which I thought was pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, initially when it came out on PS3 and uh, Xbox 360, I played it on PlayStation, and uh, it didn't really capture me. Like, I, I have... I have a bit of a story on this one, which I have told on this show before. But, um... I thought, you know, I, I should probably give it its own video and kind of, like, go back into the game for a bit and kind of talk about... why Dark Souls 2 was important and why it was important to me personally and just, like, um... A little bit of a anniversary retrospective, I guess, in a way. And uh, May is actually also the anniversary month for the channel. So I was like, you know, it's kind of a double anniversary. So why don't we just, uh, why don't we just do this? Because we're in between series right now. And, uh... Actually, there's probably a member's choice poll going on right now, so the channel members are probably voting on what the next series is going to be. Which, more on that at the end of the video. But, um, yeah. Let's uh, go ahead and get started as I go through some story time stuff. Perhaps you've seen it. There we go. Maybe in a dream. Just had to turn it down a bit. Forgotten land. Because yeah, the intro is a little loud. Um and amazing, by the way. Uh FromSoft used to just like go ham for like intro cinematics. Like Kind of starting with Armored Core and um, maybe Kingsfield. I haven't really played those games as much. Um, same with Tenchu, but um, you will lose everything. Yeah. Like the Armored Core intros always impressed me. Like the symbol of the and for the Soulsborns game, for Soulsborns, for the Soulsborn games, um. Some of them are standout, like the Bloodborne, your past, like intro is like awesome. 
Now, I don't mean like when you start a new game, I mean like the intro cutscene. Um, and uh, will have meaning, and you Dark Souls will 1, like, you know, By it's then, classic. You'll be you know? something other than talking human. about the four lords and like the Dark Soul and you know, all this stuff. Souls it's very cool, hollow. but out of the Soulsborne games. I think this one is Long probably my favorite. In a walled off land. Aside from the Sekiro, north. which kinda counts. A great king built a great kingdom. Most people count I it. I believe they called it Drang Lake. But um Perhaps you're familiar. This one just feels so classic. Like it, it feels like But one day. I don't know, mis just like mystical and cryptic enough, without really but also mind. like very much not only setting the mood, but like setting expectations. Um, in a very reasonable way, like it's obviously higher fidelity than the game's gonna look. Like, if eventually they do, like, a Dark Souls 2 remaster, I hope the in-game graphics look like this. But, like... They just, yeah. Their cinematic artists sit from soft are just fantastic. In every sense, like... This is one like a moth drawn to a flame. Or like any time I boot up this game. Your wings will burn in anguish. I almost time feel bad after time. Like considering skipping this. Just like Yeah. It's awesome. It's so good. Well, that is your fate. The fate of the cursed. Also, I would love boots like that. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, initially, like... Because I, I did play this on PS3, like I mentioned. And, um... It just didn't grip me at the time. Like, I played Dark Souls 1 first, and um, it was fine. But, like, a little context for you guys. Like, um, I didn't play Demon's Souls on PS3 until the, the remaster on, or the remake on PS5. Um, I mean, it's basically, it, it it's it's kind of a remake it's kind of a remaster that, that one's like it blurs the line a little bit um and this game is practically like the scholar of the first in edition is at least for consoles right um this is practically a remaster like, if you compare footage from, like, the PS4 version to, like, the PS3 version, it's it's a night and day difference. Like, granted, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, but, like, they did rework a lot of things in this game uh, for this release. But, um, yeah, on the PS3, like, there, there, was, a, there was a time where I was kind of mad. I, I, I was a little salty at FromSoft for essentially abandoning Armored Core, um, like before they actually did. Um, because like pre-release, 
of Armored Core 4 on the PlayStation 3. There were some expectations. Um, there... I wouldn't say promises were made, but... There were, there were a few things pre-release that um, were, I want to say promised, but I don't know if they actually were. It may have been speculation that people latched onto from like, and at the time, like, uh, video game magazines were still very much a thing. Uh, so I read a lot of like GamePro and like PSN and official PlayStation magazine. And um, like Armored Core 4 was, was going to be huge. Um, and this is another <laughs> great, like, I I'm going to skip it, but this is another great like scene. Of just uh <laughs> like setting contextualizing the game, essentially. Um just Yeah, I'll just go sorcerer because it's a little bit easier, and it doesn't matter right now. Um, take a petrified something; it's the best thing. All people come you know. here. I'm just going best for now. By the way, it's um for the sake of this video. Like, I'm not going to be like continuing this character, but um, I have played this game very, very so many times. Um, so, anyway, I was a little mad at FromSoft for essentially abandoning it because, like, the expectations for Armored Core 4 were, like, very high. And, um, like, it was supposed to have, like, fully destructible environments and, like, harnessing the power of the PS3 cell processor and all this stuff that made it sound like it was going to be their primary focus and that was kind of expected at the time because like armored core was their bread and butter for years and years like throughout the ps1 and ps2 era that was like their their main thing it was like capcom in the 80s with like Mega Man and 90s actually like up until Resident Evil, and um, it, it was synonymous with the brand, like, so nobody would have expected that they would essentially abandon the IP. It would it would seem outlandish at the time um and yeah so they kept making a couple armored cores for the ps3 generation but they also made demon souls and dark souls 1 dark souls 2 and uh so i played them but like it was this weird time where like i could tell they weren't focused on Armored Core, like they, the games came out and they were very different um, from the PS2 entries. And uh, I, I, I didn't like them. So eventually I was just like, okay, they're obviously like putting their A game in to these like Souls games. Um, and uh, so I, you know, wanted to try them out. Like, okay, what, 
what's, what's distracting them so hard? And like, you know, I heard they were successful and stuff. And I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's, you know, that's fine. They're having greater success, which means more revenue, more budget for larger titles and, you know, expanding the company and, you know, I was happy for them, but also confused and disappointed. So, played Dark Souls 1 and wasn't really that impressed. And I was kind of just more upset and disappointed that they... were dividing their efforts, I guess. And like, you know, this has... And I, I could see it, obviously. I was like, I could see why this sells well. Like, I could see why this is more successful than Armored Core was. But... I kind of wish they would just, like, go all in. You know? Like, if you, if you want to focus on this new thing, just focus on the new thing. Which eventually they did, you know. Because um, obviously, like... <laughs> You know, Dark Souls, Dark Souls sales were having, like, astronomical, like, comparatively to how much they were selling Armored Core. Like, yeah. Way more successful. So... It, uh... It made sense, like, when they stopped making Armored Core for a while. I was... 0% surprised. But, I was also hopeful that, like, someday, right, after all this success, they would, you know, bring back some of their other stuff. And, in a sense, I think that's what they were doing with Dark Souls. Like, they were bringing back Kingsfield. And, because that was, like, a series a lot of people didn't care about. And with Sekiro, like, they kind of... That was kind of the same thing. They were bringing back Tenchu. Like, nobody cared about Tenchu. And sure, like, a bunch of different companies had their hands on Tenchu, but... FromSoft had their hands on a lot of those games. Like... And, like, it may be, you know, a little tricky now, because, like, Activision published Sekiro and, you know... It kind of complicates things because, for the most part, with a lot of their current IPs, it's either just them or them and Bandai Namco. So, I don't know, I hope we get a Sekiro sequel, but I'm not, like, holding my breath for it. Like, it is one of my favorite things that FromSoft has made in the past, like, I don't know, like 20 years, but like, it's, uh, yeah. Sometimes things get complicated, like Bloodborne being published by Sony, you know? Um, I think that's part of the reason we haven't seen any other, like, you know, Bloodborne updates for quite some time. But, you know, hands have shifted over at Sony lately, too, so, you know, Jim Ryan was, like, not really at the reins anymore, so... But, um, just gonna kick this down first. Yes, yes, I'll give you smooth. So, anyway, um, that was in the PS3 generation, right? White ring, don't care. Min FG also don't care. That sucks. Um, take the appearance of a phantom. Ooh, yeah, that's that's all it does. <laughs> Super great, right? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, it's also been quite a while for me since I've played this, but um. Yeah, that was in the PS3 generation, right? 
So yeah, Armored Core 4, 4 answer, 5 verdict day. I didn't really care for those games. And it was pretty clear to me that FromSoft was distracted. Um, and so, yeah, I played Dark Souls 1, I picked up the DLC, um, couldn't figure out how to access it, and it kind of like, you know, didn't play it for a while because I didn't want to look it up. Because um, to me, part of my enjoyment with those first Souls games on the PS3 was the sense of exploration, you know? And like later, as I would come to appreciate the games, like that was still a driving force for me. Um, one of the best. One of the best. Um, the theme for Majula is just like not just the music, everything, the setting, the color palette the lighting, the environment, the ambient sound, the characters. Like, Majula is just like one of my favorite hubs in any game ever. It's so freaking good. But, um, but no, PS3 generation, I didn't really like this game very much. It, it was fine. I was just salty. But that's what it came down to. Um, I couldn't appreciate it at the time because I wanted that Armored Core that everybody was like, all the Armored Core fans were pining for because of what it could have been, you know, if they'd gone all in on Armored Core in like that generation. And um, I wasn't seeing it, you know? So, A couple of years later, I would upgrade to a PS4, and uh, I was very happy. I was very excited to like step into that like new generation, you know. And um, at the time, uh, I, I could get one game with my new console, and uh, it wasn't like not even a full price game. Like, I was, you know, budget was tight. And, um, I think I had, like, 20 bucks to spend or something. So, like, I was looking at the PSN. There was a PSN sale that was, like, pretty big. It was, like, a holiday sale or something. And, um, I was looking around and, like, kind of about reviews, like, what was good, uh, what was a game that was, like, cheap but had like a ton of content to it that I like wouldn't even care about only having one game on my new system which was not backwards compatible by the way you couldn't just install PS3 games on PS4 which I was also a little bit upset about and um still am but whatever and uh Like, it wouldn't be until, like, the next generation, right? It wasn't until, like, PS4 and Xbox One where they were just like, okay, backwards compatibility is kind of a must at this point if we're going to, like, keep going with, like, our digital storefronts and want people to go digital. And I feel like at this point now, like, in this console generation, like, it's kind of expected going forward, um, which 100% should be. You know, but, um, so I was looking at the sales, I ended up getting the, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, like, complete edition, whatever, um, so it was the base game, all the DLC, and the game was massive, and it was beautiful, and I was hooked, I, I was both impressed and hooked. What we do used to be we and that there are yeah, this is a uh, if that exposition you Jones you when you protect Oh I sorry I meant yes. I will I'm sorry, I meant yes. Sorry. It's oh yeah, I forgot I could get that too. So 
so, um... May you find peace. Yeah, so I played it a lot. And, um... You know, played it blind. No walkthroughs or anything. Ended up getting, like... Tried to play the game well, be a good protagonist and a good witcher. Um, ended up getting the bad ending and being very confused and frustrated and uh, put the game down for a very long time. And uh, I was like, alright, so time to get a new game. And once again, I was checking out the PSN sales and. Um, see, there's one seat so that. Is that here to see? However. Mm-hmm. And uh, I noticed a game on the sale that I had played, but um, I didn't beat, and I certainly didn't have the DLC for. And it was only like ten bucks. And it was this. It was Dark Souls 2: Scholar of the First Sin. And it was. You know, native PS4 version, like base game plus all three of the DLC packs, and like stuff was reworked. Um, it was like <laughs> it ran at 60 FPS. Well, not quite 60, but um, PS4 Pro would fix that, and uh, mostly. But um, that was a couple years out. And, um, it ran way better. Like, this game on the PS3 struggled with the frame rate. Like, it... I think it targeted 30, if I remember right, but, like, didn't hit the mark most of the time. Roughly. Um... I'm just gonna reorder this real quick. And, um... Yeah. PS4 version. It's it's practically a remaster. Like... It's such a night and day difference. Um... Oh, you know what? I always do this. I forgot the item over here. I was trying to be kind of thorough going through. Majula, just getting all the freebies, and I forgot that. Um, yeah, he's locked out. He needs the key, which... little break in story time real quick. I do love this about Dark Souls 2. Like, immediately, you have two options on a new game. Like, you can go this way to Hyde's Tower of Flame, or you can go the other way to the Forest of Fallen Giants. Or if you have a fragrant branch of yore, you can go the other other way and get what's her name? Elizabeth Elizabeth, I think. Something like that. Or you can go down here. If you can survive the falls. Like you you can't, like, on a fresh character, as far as I know. Um you need either the silver cat ring or fall control or just enough HP. Like, you have four paths immediately. Like, if you're on New Game Plus. Like, if you're on a New Game Cycle, you still have two different paths. And they're all, like, main paths with their own side paths. Like, it's, it's kind of incredible. Like, a most... I don't think any of the other Souls games do that. Like, for quite a while at the beginning of the game, like, it's go straight, essentially. Like, go down this one path. Um, and eventually you'll hit a branching path, but, like, for the most part, they don't immediately give you, like, various things like this. And another thing they did in this game that was different from the first one is you have fast travel immediately. You don't have to get the Lord vessel. And and they actually have like thumbnails for each location. Like it's more than just like here's some text. This is the name of a place. Do you want to go there? It's like I don't I don't remember what does it look like? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, do you want to go to, um... Chill home base or space vagina? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I know where that is. Cool. Um... And yeah, usually go forest to foreign fallen giants, but I usually do hides tower flame. Uh, no, well, I mean there are a couple of particular reasons why, but um, and the other thing they added in this game, I don't think I can do it right now. I can't remember. I have three. Three strength and seven dexterity? Yeah, I can't do it right now. Um, but this was the game that introduced... Um, yeah, you can't do it right now. Uh, power stancing. So if you have like two of the same weapon type in your left and right hand, you could do like, like an Elden Ring. You can dual wield those weapons. And in this game, I think it's you need plus fifty percent, if I remember correctly, the the stat requirements. So for the dagger, I would need yeah, I guess three strength, but uh, nine dexterity, which I don't think I can get right now. Maybe, but I don't think so. Actually, I have two souls in the name. Maybe. Uh, how do I use multiple? That's 1600. That's pretty good. Let's see if we can get this. Bear, seek, seek, lest. Seek, seek, lest. Yep, we can get it. Cool. Um, so I should be able to do a wheel or power stance. Yep. So basically, you can, and you can turn it on or off, which is kind of cool. So like, if you want to just go wah, 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 like left to right, you can do that. But if you press and hold triangle. It does that little animation, and then all of a sudden, your L1 becomes this. Which is pretty great. I think you also have, yeah, you also have a heavy, which is pretty sick looking, honestly. I don't remember if, I think he's still running, hold on, still running heavies? No, the running heavy is the same. Running L1 is a little different. I think that's the same as... Yeah. But we don't have jumping heavies or jumping light attacks. Like, that's not a thing yet. But, mad props to the game for introducing power stancing. Like, huge. Huge. Um... So yeah, to play around with this a little bit. And it, it, it's really cool too, because like... The Forest of Fallen Giants and the Hides Tower Flame are like two different... Types of challenge. Like if you have a ranged focus, Hides Tower Flame is going to be easier. If you have like a fighter with like a melee focus, the Forest of Fallen Giants is easier. Like, it's different paths for different builds and like eventually as you go through one the other one will become way easier obviously because you get stronger but um it's just so cool how they design the world like mechanically so anyway um so yeah, after The Witcher 3, I did end up picking this up on sale on for PS4. 
and um, it was my first time really like diving into the game and like giving it a second shot kind of a thing. And I am so glad I did. Because, like, it had been, like, years since Armored Core. And at that point, like, I just kind of accepted, like, that they weren't going to be making Armored Core for a while. And I was like, you know, that's fine. Like... These new games are obviously, like, selling well, you know? Dark Souls is a runaway success. And, um... By that time, I think Dark Souls 3 was already out. And, um... Like, it was getting rave reviews. People were just like, this is peak gaming. Like... Like Dark, people were saying like Dark Souls 1 and 2 were the prototypes. This is the finished product. I was just like, dang, dude. Like, oh, this is another thing about this game that a lot of people don't like. Uh, durability. Weapons break pretty easily. Kind of Breath of the Wild vibes going. But when you rest at bonfire, your durability is refilled. Um, however, enemies also respawn if you rest, obviously. But, um, this game does something the other Souls games do not do. And, um, it's a point of contention for many. But I personally love it. And, uh, it's what I affectionately refer to as the respawn limit. So, these guys had the balls to Did I already get that guy? Oops. Oh, there he is. Okay. To, um limit the amount of times that enemies will respawn. Like, I think it's... 4... 15? 14? 13? It's something like that. And, uh... After that, like... Just enemies don't come back. So... It makes farming in this game for specific items, like if you're trying to get them from enemy drops, um, like a limited experience. Like, you can't just go at it for hours and hours and hours because there's a set number of times you can try to get a drop. Like, so you need to think more tactically. You need to be like, okay, well. I need to max my item discovery, I need to, um, you know, see what my other options are for this type of item, or, um, you know, because if I hit the respawn limit, I'm just out of luck. Or maybe try to see, like, what other enemies drop this. You know, it's, um... It's really cool, honestly. Because, again, like... And for soul farming, too. Like, you can't just, like, farm the same guys over and over and over again. Like, eventually you're gonna have to go to the next section to get stronger. It's, um... But it can also be helpful. Like, it can be very helpful. Because, like... If you're having trouble with the section and you're diligent, it's like, cool. Guess what? Now there's no enemies here. You can save all your healing and all your other stuff for the next group of enemies. 
And I've done that in this game, like, quite a few times. Just purposefully taking out the same guys over and over and over again. Because it's a tricky section, you know? And, like, at the very least, it's good practice, you know? Backstab, but it's fine. I'm like, whoa, did he just jump down? No? Okay. Granted, like, some people didn't like this one because, like, it's slower paced. It's like, especially compared to, like, you know, Bloodborne. Um,. But I, I don't think that as a negative on this one. Like, it's more methodical. Not in the sense of, like, oh, you have to use stealth or anything like that. It's more in the sense of, like, classic JRPGs, where it comes down to resource management. You know? It's like, oh, am I going to have enough to get to the next section, or do I need to, you know, you gotta plan ahead a little bit. Personally, I really like it. Like, but yeah, it wasn't until I picked this game up on PS4 where, like, I could play it, like, at a better frame rate, a better resolution, um, you know, on the newer hardware, and and it had, like, so much more content, you know, and it was reworked, like, and the whole thing was only, like, ten bucks, and I was like, dude, this is already a big game, and there's three expansion, like, oh shit, that's gonna kill me. No, it's not, because I hit the thing on the way down. Uh, you can survive the fall, but, um a straight drop from up there. It just takes off most of your health. Um, oh, hey. Where'd you come from? Not cool. Not cool. Yeah, I have one Estus left. Alright. Thank you. But, um, I mean, I also have 16 life gems, so, like, you yeah, know, it's totally fine. But, um... Yeah. It it wasn't until years later. Like... And it wasn't until this game. Like... Because after this, like... After I marathoned this game... Like... I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back. Play Dark Souls 1. I didn't give it a fair shake. And, uh, I was salty. Like, I, I was a little upset <laughs> at FromSoft for abandoning Armored Core. But at that point, I didn't even really care anymore. I was like, no, I see why they did this. to rest at bonfire pretty soon though. Well, I guess the durability on the daggers is okay. 28 for the main one. But yeah, armor also has its own durability, so it is another thing to be aware of. 
Uh, this is kind of a tricky hallway here. I haven't really showcased the binoculars yet, but um, for any magic build, like the binoculars are huge. They're, they're very, very helpful. I'll show why here in just a second, because this is actually an area where it's practical. So in this game, unlike Elden Ring, like you can't lock on from a very, you know, from a good distance. So even that guy right there, I, I can't lock onto him. And um, like that's that's my that's my R three. I can't lock onto him. <laughs> so another option you can do is take out the binoculars, kind of center him on screen, and bam. And he can hit me from there too. Like he has a bow, but like he's not dealing that much damage. And the more dangerous thing is this guy. You can kind of just see his legs right in the yeah, see? Kind of shifted a little bit. And he's going to throw firebombs. There we go. But he couldn't see me. So this got him before that was a problem. I know there's like some dog enemies up here too, and like another guy that throws firebombs, but. He's like, where is he? Oh wait, did I already get him? Oh no, there he is. Oh, and there's that guy over there. Okay. So I'll just do this, power stance. Yep, that was him whiffing on his arrow shot. out. Cast left. It's totally fine. But yeah. So yeah, this was, uh, even though I played Dark Souls 1 first, this was the game that got me hooked on uh, Dark Souls. And uh, I gotta say, even though this game is 10 years old now, I, I still think it holds up very well. Like, is it dated? Of course. Is it a little bit of nostalgia? I mean, inevitably, yes, obviously. Like, there's, of course, there's nostalgia to it, like... <laughs> but, um... At the same time, like... They didn't... Re they didn't re-release this one and call it a remaster you know it pretty much is like I would say just as much as like Dark Souls remastered is a remaster but it kind of did everything that I wanted and more and even at full price I think it was like 40 bucks for this release with I think all the DLC together was more than 40 bucks, <laughs> like... At that point, for a game as massive as this is, like... And, you know, if it was, like, new, you know, coming out, like, a complete edition, that, that's 40 bucks. I think that's more than fair. But I've seen this game go on sale, like, so many times for, like, 10. And, um... Right, I can't open that yet. Uh, I couldn't remember if that one was locked or what the deal was. But... Uh, yeah, and this merchant is very, very helpful, by the way. And she will move to Majula after you do some stuff, but... Um, yeah, Dark Souls 2, it's just... Uh, it's very special to me, and it introduced a lot of things to the game, like, and also it handled New Game Plus a little bit differently because, like, um, enemy placements, there's actually, like, 
it's a little different. There's more enemies in some of the New Game Plus cycles. Um, mimic placements are different. Like, the other Souls games don't really do that in New Game Plus, where they actually mess with, like, the layouts and stuff. That's really cool. I wish, like, they would do another Souls game that takes that a step further and actually rearranges, like, the world in a more meaningful way, you know? Almost to the extent of, like, essentially, like, what randomizers do. Like, if that... Maybe not have it on by default, but have, like, a randomize option for... You know, particular items, like, different randomizers have different, like, ways of handling that, like, and separating, like, uh, drop items, key items, you know, those kind of things, and, like, randomizing them within themselves, so, like, you won't get soft locked, but it's still, you still won't know what to expect, that kind of thing. Um, that would be really cool. I just like when New Game Plus feels significantly fresh. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. But, um, and yeah, like, power stance, like, power stancing shields, actually, was also a thing in this game. Apparently not an Elden Ring, so that's like one thing you can do in this game that you can't do in any other Souls games. Um, there's, yeah, I'm just going off the top of my head. There's, there's a lot of stuff. And like, even there was a Miyazaki interview a while back where he said something to the effect of like, Dark Souls 2 walked so Elden Ring could run. And it's like, yeah, in a lot of ways, yes. Um, it was a thing where initially I didn't like it because it wasn't the thing I wanted. Because what I wanted was for them to go just ham on a new Armored Core game that had like 10 different endings and like, you know, 20 different unique NPCs that all had like cool backstories and you could recruit them or you could do like co-op and you could do uh, the arena but also have like real players in the arena um, and the rankings would actually change and you get different you know there there is a lot of cool stuff they could do and a lot of cool stuff they could still do with like Armored Core 7 because Armored Core 6 did well it did better than they expected. And like Elden Ring did better than they expected. And I'm sure, 100% positive, Shadow of the Earth Tree will do better than they expected. And so, like, FromSoft all the way, baby. Like, they are one of the only developers in my opinion, that instills a sense of confidence. Like, as somebody who is a sucker for pretty much everything that they've made since, like, well, you know, nobody's perfect, right? But <laughs> Thank you. like any Soulsborne thing, I, I'm just I'm just, TLDR. It's way too long. It's way too late in the video for a TLDR. But um, I'm a huge fan. Like they've had ups and downs, in my opinion. But, like, I've been a fan of FromSoft since 1997, with Armored Core. And, uh... They make some quality stuff. It's not always my cup of tea. 
Like, I mean, I'm never going to get a PSVR, so I'm not going to play that VR game that they made. But, um, you know, I've seen playthroughs, and it's very interesting from, like, a narrative perspective. Um, and you kind of got to try some stuff sometimes to make something that's, like, truly polished and refined. Like, and that's... That's kind of this game in a nutshell. Like, they they tried a lot of stuff. Some of it worked out, some of it didn't. Some of the things I want them to bring back, like weapon durability and stuff, like equipment durability in general, that, that was a good mechanic in my book. Like, it made... It adds an element to in my opinion it incentivizes resting at the bonfire because one narratively at least in Dark Souls you kind of need to because of Estus Like, you don't have to in this game, technically. And you actually get a secret item for finishing the game without resting at any of the bonfires. Um, which is very difficult, by the way. I've never done it. But, um... If you're just playing the game, like, for the first time casually blind... Like, yeah, if your, your durability is running out... Your weapon's about to break, your armor's about to break. You want to rest at the bonfire. Like, you get your Estus back, too. Like, because paying to repair equipment in this game is very expensive, one. And two, you have to leg it back to a blacksmith. So... It's, uh... Not... Not great. But, like, in Elden Ring, like, I love Elden Ring, but sometimes, like, if you know what you're doing and stuff, most of the, actually most of the time, like, in New Game Plus, at least in my experience, I don't want, like, I don't stop at a side of grace, unless I have to change, like, my equip spells. That's pretty much it. But if there was a mechanic like that where just everything has durability and getting hit and like using you know stuff, blah 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 blah. Like wears it down, but like resting at a side of grace would fill it back up. That'd be great. Because like they didn't change that part, resting at a side of grace like respawns things. So I mean yeah, you get your refill, but any enemies you've defeated are also coming back. But because the game's more open, it makes it easier to just like avoid enemies, plus you can just get on torrent and ride past most things, period. So like, you don't have a horse in this game. If you did, you wouldn't really have to fight most things, and you can't go around a lot of stuff. There are some narrow passageways where there is no way past a thing, you have to fight it. So, it's just a different design, it's a different type of thing. Is it necessarily better or worse? No, not necessarily. And there's no, like, a universal answer of, like, oh, this was great, they should do this in this game. It's like, well, kinda, but the game's designed differently. Does it make sense with all of the other systems that are in place? Like... And by systems, I mean, like, mechanics in place. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, you know? You can't just say, oh, I'm going to plop this and this, and it'll be better. Sometimes, yes. Not necessarily all the time. But, anyway, 
that's kind of my mini retrospective like story time thing about how initially I didn't like Dark Souls because it wasn't Armored Core and now I do and um, Shadow of the Earth Tree weight is excruciating so I'm gonna <laughs> hang in there and uh, was it June 23rd? Can't can't come soon enough. Whatever it is, 21st. When I, I think it's 23rd. But anyway, thank you all once again for being here, guys. Greatly appreciate. It. Hope you enjoyed. And of course, before we get going, a very special thank you going out to the current Farts and Crab Show members, people who make it possible: Novellus Draconis, Don Sabino, and WTF Corey, who has a lovely channel here on YouTube, by the way, and Aaron Schick. Thank you all so much for choosing to support the show a bit more directly via channel membership. It vastly helps out greatly appreciated and if you guys want to be incredibly awesome like them and get in on all those membership benefits check out the join button down below or the link in the description that will redirect you in the same way uh tier start at three bucks a month it's only 10 cents a day gets you into all the basic stuff including getting to vote on the series that get made here on the channel via the members choice polls which we probably have one going on right now because i think this video is coming out in late may I believe and um yeah last week of may 2024 is a member's choice poll to decide the series that will be following hyper light drifter which should have ended recently so uh there should still be a couple days left on that um they always run for a full seven days so that one started on may 24th and will end as soon as june hits so, uh, however, even after the poll ends, it will stay open, as all the previous members' choice polls have, so any retroactive votes on things will be considered for future ones. And actually, this poll is, yeah, some of the options from previous ones that weren't selected, but got votes later on. So, thank you once again, channel members, for going back to those previous polls and voting on those highly appreciated um but this is an approximation of future announcements from the past so if you guys want to stay up to date on all the announcements as they happen and the bell doesn't work out for you don't worry i've heard that from a lot of people uh but there's three other ways to do that so the community tab here on the channel farts and crap show twitter or the discord uh i always post on all three whenever there's an announcement so any of those three will totally work and again links for those are down in the description also on the channel banner but oh and also if you guys are a channel member or considering it uh those aforementioned members choice polls are over on the membership tab here on the channel so yeah and all of those are going back to the very first one are still open so but that is going to do it for today. So thank you all for being here, guys. Till next time, take care, and I hope you all have a beautiful day.